Hello and welcome to the first video of PP series or Power Pivot Tutorial series. Actually, this video will be PP01, the first video, an introduction to Power Pivot. We are going to discuss three topics or three questions. First one is what is Power Pivot? And then we are going to discuss what are its uses and finally how to activate it. And also we are going to demo a practical example. And this example will also help us to discuss some other topics like how to build relationships between tables and specifically we're going to discuss the one-to-many relations between tables secondly how to add calculated column into one of our tables and then we're going to see how to create measures using DAX and finally how to add number formatting to our measures Let's try to answer the first question, what is Power Pivot? Actually, if you search Google about Power Pivot, you will get this answer and it is simply on the Microsoft website. The definition as follows, it is an Excel add-in you can use to perform powerful data analysis and create sophisticated data models. With Power Pivot also, you can mash up large numbers of data from various sources, perform information analysis rapidly, and share insights easily. That was very generic, so let's try to be more specific and let me tell you that Power Pivot contains main three parts. First part is the data model, and this is nothing but a database working behind the scene in each and every workbook. This database or data model gives you the ability to work with data from multiple tables. It helps you to create relations between these tables, and also you can see the result or the output of this data model inside either a pivot table or a pivot chart. So the first part is the data model itself. The second part is the DAX and DAX is simply expression language or formal language and it stands for data analysis expression and this DAX language it is not the same like the cell formula but it is similar there is some common functions here and there however it is much much powerful and give you a lot of flexibility that you can use to create your calculations and your models it also help you to add calculated columns you can work with the relationships that you create in your model and also it helps you to perform something we called dynamic aggregation the final part is the pivot table itself and it is not the same like the pivot table you used to work with it is similar however there's some additional features and some differences we are going to discuss during this series and that's why we consider pivot table is a very important feature in excel and that's why we did a full series of around 20 videos about the pivot tables it's called pt for pivot tables and you'll see a link to this series on the top of the screen you can just go and have a look on it actually there's another component we can call it power pivot window and it is there starting Excel 2016. So if you have 2010 or 2013, you still can work on the data model. You can also write DAX measures and do DAX calculations. However, you'll not be able to work with the Power Pivot window. And here is how it looks like. However, we're going to talk about it in more details later in this video. And there are some features I want to tell you about. First thing, it is a separate window and it is working parallel with the normal Excel window and you can toggle between both of them. It is unlike the Power Query that you have to close first and then start to or restart working on the normal Excel worksheet. And also it's used to manage your data model. You can use it to add new data. You can use it to import data from different sources. But believe me, the best way to import data into Excel is basically the Power Query. And we have a full series ab about Power Query and how you can use it. You will find the link of it on top of the screen right now. You can go and check it out and also use it to view data model actually if you are triggering the data model and working for normal excel window which is okay you can do this however you'll not be able to view your data model unless you have the power pivot window or you activate the power pivot window and also you can use it to create relations between tables and finally you can use it to add calculated fields or calculated columns inside your data model <laughs> And now let's try to discuss the second topic, which is what are Power Pivot uses? Actually, there is a lot of things that you can decide to use Power Pivot for. However, I'm listing here only seven reasons or seven Power Pivot uses. 
First one is if you are going to manage data larger than 1 million rows. You know that the limit in the Excel is only 1 million rows and behind this you will not be able to work with this number of rows inside the normal Excel worksheet and here Power Pivot comes into action and there is no issue at all with the number of rows. You can work with 10 million, 20 million. Actually the real big data can be handled easily with the Power Pivot. Second one is the poor performance of Excel. You know that even if you are not exceeding the 1 million rows limit, but you are working with large number of functions and external links, the performance of Excel will be too bad and your worksheet will turn to be very slow. And here also the Power Pivot can be a very good solution for this issue. Third one, automating your recurring work, especially if you are working with the Power Pivot and Power Query all together. And in many of our projects that we are going to discuss during this series, we'll see a lot of examples how to automate your recurring work using both Power Query and Power Pivot together. The fourth reason why you may use the Power Pivot is connecting data. Actually, if you have your source data outside your Excel worksheet, and this can be the case in many situations, it can be on a CSV file, text file, Excel files, or even inside a regional database. Here, the Power Pivot will be very useful. The Power Pivot itself can directly connect to any of these data sources. And also using Power Query, this will be a much, much more powerful tool to connect from these sources into the Power Pivot and start to work very easy inside the data model. Adding to this one, if you are using the Power Pivot to connect your data, this means that you are going to keep your data source intact and you are working on a read-only version of your data. So if you are a team of people working on the same data source, I can connect to the data and do all the transformation and also add calculations, add columns and do some modeling and also prepare my reports. And each and every one of the team member can do the same without changing anything in the source data and this is very beneficial and very powerful feature in Power Pivot. Then you can make use of the DAX capabilities. Example of that is the time intelligence functions. It helps you to do a lot of things that you'll not be able to do with the normal Excel uh, worksheet formula. And the final one is using the same DAX measure over and over in the same model, meaning that you can do only one formula, only one calculation, and you can use it over and over. Plus, you can attach a number formatting to this measure, so you don't have to redo your number formatting each and every time you use your calculation inside your final report. Additional one that we have to add to the seven above is that data model is in Power BI. So if you are good in Power Query, and also you are good in data modeling and DAX, you can easily start work in Power BI. The only thing that is missing is the visuals, how to do the Power BI visuals, but the basics of Power Query and also the data modeling and the DAX is the same between both Excel and Power BI. <music>
in this video we are going to describe some of these features but for you to know here in this white area you are going to see your data once you load anything the data model you are going to see your tables here and also there's something called diagram view you can see all tables together with the relations between these tables if you want to save the changes that you did inside this window you can just use the save icon or you can go back to the normal excel sheet and use the same save button and if you use the save button inside the normal excel window it will save changes in both the normal excel window and also inside the power pivot window because both are linked together once you do this once you activate the power pivot window you will see that you have a new ribbon called power pivot if you select on the left hand side you will have some icons i'm going to tell you about a couple of them first one is the manage and you use this when you want to open or go back to the power pivot window also measures icon you use this to create or manage your dax measures and also you can use the add to data model if you want to add one of these table directly to the data model let's have a look on our practical example for today you can see that we have two sets of data i already transform both into table format if you select the first one and check the table design you will see the name of the table is sales t and it contains the sales transaction for some products you'll see that it has only three columns first one is a product id and then the quantity sold for each uh, product id and also the date of the transaction on the other hand if you check the other table if you check the table design as well you'll see this is the price table or price per kg table you will see also i have the product id for each and every product and also i have the name of each product and finally i have the price of each product the requirement is to prepare a sales report using the information that i have inside these two tables as long as i'm working into two tables this can be easily transformed into a data model and i can capitalize on all the features of the power pivot suppose that i'm doing this job or this project inside the same excel worksheet without using the data model the best way is to create another two columns inside the sales t table i'm going to use a function like vlookup in order to bring the name of the fruits inside this column and also the price for each fruit or for each product inside another column and then i can use the multiplication to add additional column and to calculate the price this is the traditional way of solving this issue or uh, working with these two tables however we are going to see a different way which is activating the data model and try to capitalize on the data model and power pivot features actually i told you before there is no need to jump into the power pivot window from inside the normal excel window you can also trigger the data model and capitalize on all its features in order to do this i'm going to select the data ribbon and from data tools you will find this icon and if you hover over it you will see the screen tip saying relationships if you just click on this it will open this screen you can see there is no relations at all in this workbook however i can use the new button in order to create a new one so the first thing is to create a relation between these two tables and it is very obvious that the product id is the common between the two tables i have here the product id and also i have here the product id i can use the product id as the key that i'm going to tell excel please use to work with these two tables together so the first thing required in this create relation window is the first table so let me select the first table as a sales t here is the first one and the column that i'm going to use in order to link with the other table will be for sure the product id second table obviously will be price kg and then the related column for sure it will be the product id remember that excel telling you the, that the first one is a foreign key and the second one is primary key i'm going to talk about this later in few minutes however let me try to create this relation first let me click on ok you will see here loading data model this means that the data model is being triggered now back to manage relationship window you will find that i have one relation created once i created this relation i can just close the manage relationships window and once i have this relation created i am eligible now to create a report based on these two tables based on the data inside these two tables together but in order to do this i need to create a pivot table because we mentioned at the beginning that the output of your data model 
need to be presented on either a pivot table or a pivot chart. So I'm going to the insert ribbon. On the left hand side, I have the pivot table icon. Let me select this small arrow. I have three options. I'm going to select from data model and this will trigger a small window asking you existing or new worksheet. Let me select existing at F10 and then click on OK, a pivot table created. I'm going to change the name to sales report and enter on the right hand side you will see your pivot table fields and you can notice that i have two tables not one table this is not like the traditional pivot table it is a pivot table based on the data model so i can have more than one table inside my pivot table fields if you just click on the arrow on the left hand side of each table you will see the list of the fields inside this table so i have three fields inside the price kg and also i have three fields inside the sales t table i can directly start build my report i'm going to bring the fruits which is the name of my products inside the rows this will create a unique list of all my products and then i can select from the sales t table the quantity i can just put it inside the value and here it will be summarized with a summation function so i have the total of eight to eight by each and every product and you can see i managed to create a report based on the names of the fruits and the quantity from the sales t table if you want to view this inside the power pivot window you can basically go to the power pivot ribbon on the left hand side you can just click on the manage icon this will trigger the power pivot window and you'll notice that we have two tables here the first one is our transaction table containing the sales transaction and called sales t the other one is our dimensional or lookup table called price kg and it has the unique list of your products and the name of the products and also the price of these products if you want to view the relation that we just created you can go to view from the home ribbon to view and then diagram view or you can just use this icon from the bottom right corner here and here you go this is the diagram view i have the two tables and if you hover over this relation this is the relation that we just created you will see that it is connected via the product id column in both tables so and you'll notice that there is a uh, one written here next to the price kg table and an asterisk and this asterisk stands for many and it is written next to the sales t table meaning that i have a one to many relation between these two tables and to understand exactly what is one to many relation let's go to this powerpoint slide and understand what happened exactly here is my two tables on the left hand side i have the sales t table or what we call transaction table or you can also call it fact table on the right hand side you have the lookup table and you notice that the relation between these two tables is based on the common column which is the product id and that's why we managed to create a relation or a connection between these two tables let's take the first item of the lookup table which is the apple the code is 1001 if you just look at the full list you will notice that it is occurred only once meaning that this list is a unique list of all the product ids which represent the list of my fruit on the other hand side in the transaction table you can notice that the same code occurred more than once meaning that this column is not a unique list each and every product id can appear more than once and this is normal because i'm selling some apple on 26th of october and some other apple on 4th of november and so on and so forth for each and every product id and that's why we can call this column inside the lookup table we can call it a primary key or also we can call it a unique identifier because each and every apple has only one id and this id can't appear more than once inside this list and basically it is a unique list of my product ids and this is not the case for the transaction table and that's why we call it a foreign key meaning that each and every product id can appear more than once inside this column so to summarize duplicates are not allowed inside the primary key which is inside the lookup table or in our case in the price key g table but the duplicates allowed inside the foreign key which is the product id inside the transaction table or our sales t table that's why we call this relation one to many you will notice that the one side of the relation coming from the lookup table and going to the foreign key inside the transaction table to land on the many side of the relationship before moving forward into our project today i just came back to my excel sheet and i just reset everything that we did and i want to start all over again because i want to show you some other options that you can do the same thing but in a different way now i have my two tables 
the transaction table and the dimension table and this time i'm going to start by creating the pivot table directly in order to do this i'm going to again to the insert ribbon and from the left hand side i have the pivot table icon this time i'm going to select from table or range because i'm selecting a single cell inside my transaction table i'm eligible to just click on this one it will trigger this window asking you if you want to build your pivot table based on the table sales t which is correct and also i need the existing worksheet and let me select the same place f10 but this time i'm going to select this very last option which is add this to data model and this will also trigger our data model and let's see how once i click on this it will create the pivot table let me change again the name and if you look at the right hand side you have the feed list and this time i can see only the sales t table but notice that this is a tab called active or ribbon called active if you switch to all you will see both of your tables so let's try to create the report directly i'm going to do the same i'm going to price kg i'm going to select the fruits in the rows and then going to sales t and then quantity and i'm going to drop it inside the value and you'll notice two things you'll see the grand total is everywhere in your report so the report failed to find the correct relation it just allowed you to select your fields but the calculation is not correct at all except for the grand total and also if you look at your pivot table window you will notice that there is a warning here called relationships between tables may be needed so it's already sensed that there's no relation between these two tables and you cannot continue like this and giving you this warning so if you want to create the relation you can just go to create and this will follow the same steps that we did previously but this time let's try the auto detect if i just click on the auto detect this window will open it is now trying to find the relation and here you go it created the relation automatically once you close this you will notice that the report now is working perfectly once again i did reset my workbook and you can see that i have only the two tables no pivot table and also there is nothing inside data model for the moment let me show you another effective way to do exactly what we just did together this time i'm going to select the first table which is the sales c table and i'm going to power pivot ribbon on the left hand side i have all the options let me select the third icon which is add to data model once i click on it it will trigger again the power pivot window and now you can see that the first table appears inside the power pivot window which is our sales t table let me toggle between the two windows i'm going back to the normal excel sheet i'm going to select any cell inside the second table which is price kg again add to data model it will send me back again to the power pivot window and i have also my second table here if you go to diagram view you will notice that i have the two tables but there is no relation created between both of them let me create this relation it is very easy from this window i can just go to the product id from the price kg which is our lookup table and i'm going to click and drag until i reach the product id inside the sales table and i will release my click and here you go the relation just created from here i can just create my pivot table again i can choose either going back to the excel sheet and again use the insert and pivot table or from the power pivot window itself you will see there is icon called pivot table if you just click on it it will send you back to the excel sheet asking you where exactly you want to put your pivot table existing worksheet and no problem i can just select f10 click on ok and i can repeat the same steps to create my report <music> So I have now my sales report. It is a very basic report. It shows a summary of the sold quantity by product. But this is not good enough for our project. I need to add another piece of info, which is basically the sales value. So I need to add another column here containing the sales value. Let's go back to the Power Pivot window and see how we can enrich our model in order to add this piece of info. So you can notice that inside the sales T table, I have the product ID and also I have the quantity, but I don't have the price. And in order to calculate the revenue, I need to multiply the quantity by the price. However, we are lucky enough to have the prices inside the price kg table i have here a column containing the price and also luckily we have a relation between these two tables so i can bring in the prices inside this table in a new column and then add a multiplication step so i can get the sales value for each and every line item of these transactions in order to do this i need to add a new column so in order to add a new column inside any of the data model tables you have to add it using a dax formula you cannot just 
enter or key punch data inside any of these table so if i put my cursor here and try to write and then enter it will not allow you the formula must start with an equal sign so you need to add a formula not just keep punching or just entering information like this so the first step to add a new column i need to give it a name so i can just go to the header of the most right column which is basically a add column it's just a mock-up to just use it to add a new column so i have only in this table three columns product id quantity and date and then the fourth one it just written add column here i can just double click so let me call this prices and then enter once i click on enter it will prompt me directly to the formula bar and here i can start to write the formula or the function that is required to bring in the prices inside this table so let's start with a very basic uh, function called related and this function related is basically the vlookup of the dax or the vlookup of the data model so the function called related if i start to write after the equal i'm going to start to write r e l and you will see that the screen assistance is here the first choice is related if you just uh, hit tab it will write the function and it will open the first bracket as you can see from the screen tip it requires a column so what i need basically is the price i can just select by the mouse and then tab and then close the bracket and enter here you go i have the prices for each and every transaction for the entire table you need to write the formula only once at the beginning and it will be automatically populated to the entire table remember that there is no cell reference i don't have any reference here this is just numbering it's not like a cell reference you are working with only columns the data model is just working with columns you cannot just give a cell reference so the same formula will be applied for each and every line the excel itself or the data model engine or the power pivot itself will understand that you want to bring the correct price from the price kg table to each and every product id using the relation between the product id and the price kg table this is what we call the raw context it is working automatically it will just relate each and every line with the correspondent line inside the price kg exactly the same like what you are doing using the vlookup function in the normal excel formula environment okay now i need to multiply the quantity times the price i can add another column and do this multiplication however i would prefer to do it inside the same column so i can just continue i can just go to any cell if you select just any cell you will see in the formula bar you have the same formula so you can just continue your formula and you can just use the multiplication operator and then select the quantity and it will write the quantity as you can see just i select it will write the sales t quantity meaning that it is selected the sales t table and then the column called quantity once i hit enter you will see now the revenue is calculated no problem and i can change the header of the column to be revenue instead of prices so instead of adding a new column i just did it in one go i did only one step the revenue which is basically multiplication of the sales quantity times the related price from the price kg table no problem at all i can also do another a quick one which is adding number formatting i can just format this column i can use the currency i can use english united states no problem so now it is revenue and the number formatting is currency and this will help you once you try to drag this column inside your pivot table and now let's go back to our pivot table and try to add this piece of info if you check now your pivot table fields you will find additional column inside the sales t and called revenue if you just drag this inside the value section you will see that you have the sum of the revenue which is 20,350 and also the number formatting is coming correctly from the data model <music> now suppose that i need to add another piece of info inside my analysis which is basically the average price for sure the average price for each and every line will be exactly the same like the prices i have here in this table but the issue is the grand total i need to see also the average price for the grand total and also because i have a date column as you can see here i can also do a slice and dice by day or by month inside the same pivot table or in another copy of the pivot table so i'm going back to the power pivot window and inside the sales t table let's have a quick think about this if i try to divide the revenue by the quantity 
for sure this will give me the price but this price would be for each and every transaction if i drop them again inside the pivot table it will aggregate by summation and the summation of the prices will give me a wrong piece of info for the total so adding column will not be a good solution so the only solution i have inside this data model is to use a dax formula or a dax measure to calculate the average price and this will be basically the division of the revenue column over the quantity column but with aggregation why with aggregation because any measure need to be evaluated to a single value or a scalar if i did any measure and the value will be evaluated to more than single value it will give me an error in order to do this i need first to sum the revenue column and then divide it by the summation of the quantity column and this will be a very easy step let's try to do it together i have here the data and then i have this thick line this thick line is flexible i can just decide where to put it and then below this gray thick line i have something we call it the measure grid i can just select anywhere inside the measure grid and start to write my dax formula in order to write the dax formula i need to give it a name first and the name for my measure will be average price so i will start by writing the name of the measure avg price and then colon and colon is telling excel the name of the measure already ended and then equal equals mean that let's start to write our formula and this will basically a submission i can just use the sum function and the sum index is exactly doing the same like the normal excel but it will require a column name not a range of cells like what we do in the normal excel sheet formulas so the column name i can just write the name of the column which is the revenue i can just sum the revenue you can see here one of my options however i need to give the full name and the full name for each column will be the name of the table then the name of the column so inside the formula bar i can just start to write sales s a l and here i have the four columns that we have inside the sales t table i'm going to select by mouse the sales t revenue and then tab and then close the bracket for the sum function and then let me just commit this and press enter and this will give you the, exactly the total revenue for the entire table let me add to the same measure i'm going to edit again inside the formula bar and then divide and then sum this time I, I need to sum the quantity sal to go to the sales t table quantity will be my third selection i'm going to select tab and then close the bracket for the second sum and then enter and this will give me the average price for the grand total and let's try to put this inside our pivot table i'm going back to excel i'm going to select the pivot table the pivot table fields i can just go to the sales t table and you will see that i have additional item here and it starts with the ffx and this means it is a measure and you need to understand that measures can be only used inside the value section and it cannot be used inside the filter or columns or rows so let me try to drop it in the columns it will give you an error and same for filters and rows i can just take it and drop it inside the value section and here you go i have the correct answer for the grand total and also if you look at the item by item it's also correct you can just double check from the price table apple 30 banana 15 that's fine although i did the calculation on aggregate level but when i drop it inside the pivot table it's calculate for each and every item correctly and this feature called the filter context and it is very important concept inside the data model and this will be well explained in the future videos in this series let me copy this pivot table and try to design another report Control c and Control v while selecting the entire table for sure here i have the same features the same uh, fields coming from the same data model i can just change i can just take out the fruits from the rows here i have the total quantity the average revenue and also the average price i can go to sales t i have the date column i can just drop it in the rows it will do an automatic grouping and you can see it's summarized by month and you can see that again i have the sum of the quantity it's correct i have also the sum of the revenue and also the calculation of the average price which is also calculated by month correctly <laughs> The last section of this video is talking about the number formatting you can see that here is the number formatting of the average price it's obviously it is a general number formatting and there is a very good option inside data model and the pivot tables coming from data model that you can attach the number formatting to the measure itself in order to do this let's go back to the power pivot window 
and I'm going to select my measure and I can go directly to formatting and from this area I can just select something like currency English United States I can also decrease the decimal places it will be only one decimal place and here you go 24.6 dollars as an average price and if you go back to the pivot tables the two pivot tables actually you will see that the number formatting is coming correctly from the data model and if you use this measure over and over it will maintain the same number formatting it is very simple but actually is very very useful that was a very long video a comprehensive introduction to power pivot if you like the video please like it subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment and you will find some links here please check them out i hope that was useful for you thank you very much for your time and see you in next video and bye